funny because, you know, friends would ask, especially when I started to do this, and they'd be like, well, how, how in the world do you take orders from, like, a 25-year-old kid? How do you do this? And yeah, that's different, though, yeah. It was sort of. I said, you know, maybe 25, and chronologically, I've got some got some years, but if this guy's got five or six more military years of experience, I would be an idiot not to listen to him. Sure. And that was, so it was never really an issue. No, I meant more along the lines of just being mature. Being a mature adult in the way in which, hey, you know, you have mm. respect for him. Um, he obviously probably had some mutual respect for you because of your age and what you've accomplished even to this point because a lot i mean not a lot of people get to even that point maybe yeah i mean they, i there are a lot of people especially my family would argue about the maturity point sir but yeah <laughs> yeah mine too brian yeah. i don't know why we get along so well yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> but, but i don't i don't i think it's just a matter of you know I, I, military non-military whatever if you if you treat people with respect yeah until they they don't earn that respect anymore then then you're you're gonna be fine yeah so you you did drive three hours mm-hmm. then, yeah. okay. So you you arrive there at Stewart and uh, new guy and and you walk in the door. I'm just, I mean, again, I I would just be kind of shocked that I got a guy that's walking in the door of your age, in that unit where most guys, you know, at least back in the day, typically 80, 18 to to thirty six months was about their rotation out just because it was just burnout. Mm-hmm. And um, here you are walking in the door, and some of these guys are probably thinking about they're getting ready to check out, and then you're walking in, you're going, jeez, man, I, okay, I might just have to change my mind here, you know. I can't let this happen. I, I don't know if, if, I mean, I'm sure that behind closed doors, you know, there were conversations that, that were had you know, yeah. that, that I wasn't privy to, but I think one of the best things about you know, this organization in general is nobody cares. Yeah. You know, you just you either do your job or you don't do your job, and whatever form that comes in is, is kind of secondary. So I, I don't think... Really, that you know, besides the initial part or whatever, or occasional joke at, at this and that and the other, that it ever really was a factor, honestly, which yeah. is one of the greatest things about it. They just no one cares. That's the greatest thing about the organization too is that you know, from from the top down, we have the standard, you know, and as long as you're as long as you're doing the standard, nobody gives a shit about it. You know, everything else, and you're you know keeping you know living by the Ranger Creed and uh, maintain the standard, like. Do your job. Nobody cares about your gender or your any of that crap. Well, and it's funny that you do mention that because a lot of guys who are not in the soft community or are out, not even in the military for that matter, make assumptions differently about that. You know, about well, gender. You know, when when women started going through uh, the courses, and now of course there are women in regiment. And of course, in the very beginning, it was well, they'll never make it a regiment, you know. They'll, you know, and then now they're in regiment. Then it's I like would put the two women that I've worked with in regiment up against the guys that are saying that stuff. Yeah, ex- exactly at the same age and the same time, and I, you know they can say what they want, and they probably were you know hard asses at the time, but I guarantee you both of them just would PT the shit right out of them. Yeah. And 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 go as hard as they would in every direction. Well, so there, um, Mike, um, one of the former podcast uh, hosts on here, he's now moved on into working more of a civilian job, was a Navy SEAL, former Navy SEAL that became a 160th pilot. He switched over and, and uh, went to flight school and such. And Mike was talking about when women entered into the 160th, um, they were out in formation and how... Um, you know, everybody was mumbling amongst themselves, you know, prior to that formation with the sergeant major. And, you know, so he thought because he was a little bit older and, you know, all that, he'll go ahead. And when the sergeant major asked, does anybody have any problems with this? You know, he raised his hand and they asked him and he said, you know, um, I'm just worried if, you know, she's going to be able to carry me out of combat, you know, uh, in a bad situation, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, all right, well, starting tomorrow at 8 o'clock, we're going to start doing, you know, dead carry and blah, 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 you know, all these different things. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. I'm not that concerned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because when it comes down to it, you know, they're, they're going to do their job. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I've the, like I said, the two um, amazing Ranger females that I've, I've had the pleasure of working with, they crush it every day. I, I, they're they're appreciated, and um, you know I'm sure people have their opinions, but uh, around me they damn sure keep it to themselves. Yeah, I, I would be the first to tell them that um, I've RFS you know tons of tons of Rangers that they called themselves Rangers, but they didn't perform like these you know amazing females are crushing them. You know, so if you call yourself a ranger you better be able to do just as much as they do as good as they do it or better if you want to talk shit and um 
I've read all the crap on Facebook and all that stuff, you know. Right. And I'm like, they're, they're armchair rangers. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, you, you, uh, you have no idea, right? Yeah. Like, Most of them. I mean, there are some legit rangers, but they're old school, very yeah. old school. Well, usually the old timers, you know. From the well, the thing is, like, it, it, BG either change with the time and, and become, you know, better uh, at, uh, with it and a better leader for it, and you know, all those things involved. Or you're going to get left behind. You know, we, we ain't doing things like we did back in World War II. If we were, we'd, <laughs> we wouldn't be where we're at right now. So. Well, I, and I say all that, I bring all this up, because, <clears throat> you know, like you, somebody might be judging a book by its cover, sizing you up based on, you know, they're discriminating sure. somehow, and they're wanting you to prove them wrong, right? I'm not sizing him up, for sure. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, right? If you look at him, I, I, I'd, like, I'd oh, be man, the last one to do uh, that. But Lunch is on me, bro. <laughs> I, I don't, like I don't really think, I, I don't know, and, and, and I don't, obviously you never see yourself the way other people see you, so you have no idea. I, I yeah. just never, I'm never the smartest guy in the room, and there's always somebody bigger. It's, it's, it's you know, mm. that, that is what it is. You know, it, well, it is. <laughs> um, I, well, you're pretty humble then. Yeah, yeah, yeah but very, not, very, not everybody, very holy cow. No, it, it, it's, and I don't really, not as much humility as it is just like, I, you have to remember that you're lucky to be where you are. Yeah. You know, like work hard and all that. Yes, absolutely. But right. you have to be fortunate to last in anything, I think. And especially in, in something like this, there have to be a lot of breaks. People have to have to help you one way or the other, whether you whether you believe that or not, that somebody mm-hmm. in front of the scenes or behind the scenes is helping you get where you are. And, uh, and I've had that a ton. Um, I, I, like I said, I don't necessarily think um, that it's it, there's been anything prejudicial. And if there has been, it's been as much to my advantage as it has my disadvantage. So I, I don't, I think it's still a pretty level field as far as I go. But that's, that's wisdom. Yeah. Well, I mean, what you just said is wisdom, which is, you know, years of experience and learning by mistakes and then having humility. But you're right. I mean, if, if people ask me, Robert, you know, how did you get to do this or that and the other? And it's like, listen, I'm no different than any other person. You know, I may have had some really good breaks. I had some people that were there that thank God they were in my side and, you know, my network or whatever that allowed me to open that door. But something, you know, they would say, no, you did something to crack the door open. And then once you cracked it open, you proved yourself, you know, after that. And I would say the same thing for you, but it's great advice that you're giving to people who are listening, you know, who are already self-checking themselves out for whatever reason, even if it's not option 40, it's not Ranger uh, Regiment. They're checking themselves off, you know, but like he, he's got, he's, and people are successful, you know, in army or business or whatever. But um, you have to have that dream, that motivation to reach that stuff. And having the people behind the scenes and, you know, or whatever is great. But if you can't help somebody that doesn't want to be helped, and obviously Sir Marks had, a, you know, he had a goal to get to. So working hard to get to where he was going is, is what kept him going. So that, that's in everything you do, though, you know. So. Yeah, I, I, it's the same thing. And, and you can't rest on – can't drink your own Kool Aid too much, you know. You can't. What, who am I? What have I done? We get that. Day. We get that a lot. Um, <laughs> we get that a lot. Yeah. Um, and it's great. It's not, not. You shouldn't be proud of yourself, but you know what you did yesterday doesn't really matter anymore. And then it's true in our place too. That's a that's a different. There's a difference in being proud of yourself, you know, and being like boastful about yourself. Yeah, like, Con- confident but not co- cocky, not yeah. arrogant. Co- yeah. Right. We confident but not arrogant. And uh, that, that's, a, that's a great. Yeah. Very fine line. It is very, because I've been to multiple, you know, I don't give a shit if I'm a ranger or not. Like, I go to schools, and you know, when I was a younger E6, E7, and I treat everybody there, you know, like good people, and I, I don't care what unit you're in, we're all doing the same damn school together. And, uh, you know, I've had people, when I went to MLC, for instance, you know, we're all like doing study groups and stuff, and I'm helping with, you know, this is stuff we do, you know, all the time at work, and these guys never see it. Man, I, they're like, man, I, I've always thought Rangers were assholes. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's unfortunate. But uh, it's it's not being cocky about it. You know, you, we're all supposed to help each other. And he's he helps. Dude, if I could, if I get like 10 of these guys work, like we, we'd run the regiment. <laughs> well, and you know, it's funny that you mentioned about, um, you know, the, the <clears throat> Ranger asshole part of it and everything. <clears throat> Um, I used to be one of those. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, there are, there, you know, there is a, there's a bit of that and everything, but there's, because, again, there's a standard that's been set by rangers ahead of them that they're trying to maintain and everything else, but when you get down to it, still a very human individual that has a story back behind it, um, real down-to-earth, I mean, 
Hell, even on this podcast, as many Rangers that we've had on the podcast, whether they're active duty or veterans or whatever, I've, I've never said that. I never thought that. Not once. I think, too, that that's, you know, how you meet somebody, you know, your perspective of, of how you meet somebody. Yeah. If, you, if you meet somebody as a friend, a friend of a friend, you're going to give them the benefit of the doubt that you wouldn't give somebody else that you met that was the friend of an enemy. Yeah. You know, you're going to see them differently. And, and I think that there's a level of professionalism that exists in our organization that it's not that people don't want to be liked, but being liked is secondary to making sure they're getting done what they need to get done. Mm-hmm. And that rubs people the wrong way sometimes. Yeah. So I think, I think a lot of that is just the perspective in which people meet you know, on the job and what they're going to do is going to be different. There are, I guarantee there are a large contingent of people who don't see me the same way that people who know me real well see me. And that's okay. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just the way we had to meet in order for me to get what I had to get done. Oh, yeah. um, right. Perfect you know, advice. You know, on, on that same topic, uh, you know, when people bring me, you know, hey, I got this guy, you know, he can work for you. I don't like, you know, this guy. Or you, when I was a squad leader, people would be like, oh, you want this guy? Take this guy. And they would come to me and be like, oh, this guy sucks and he can't do this. And I was like, dude, look, as long as he, you know, ain't broken, I'll make my own judgments. I don't, you're getting rid of him for a reason that isn't going to be the same reason I judge him on. So let him have at least a fair shake. Don't, unless he's been in trouble and I have to deal with that crap. Yeah. Other than that, like give the kid a fair shake in the new new squad or tune. I, I think honestly, you're absolutely right. You know, personally, like, it depends on on you know the peg and the hole kind of stuff. And a lot of these kids, like we talked about, 17, 18 years old when they come in, and decisions are made immediately about what they want to do or what they think they want to do. <clears throat> and sometimes that doesn't necessarily mean that they can do it. It doesn't make them a bad ranger or a bad soldier because they can't. They just haven't found that fit. So we've had a lot of success, you know, in, in my part, in taking people who were either chose or, or forced into a different a lot of work. That, He's uh, brought right. a lot of dudes. Um, so you remember um, my last podcast when we were just doing me, the the, the second one, mm-hmm. um, about the reclassing and stuff? Well, he in his platoon, you know, because he, he's a great mentor, too, to myself, actually. You know, I go to him and talk, and uh, he, he just, he's just a great guy. And he, he'll, he'll, you know, recruit those guys down at the company levels that aren't, like, doing the 11 Bravo thing, you know, as well, or they're not getting their tab when they're supposed to. And he'll scoop them up, you know, if they're a decent, you know, ranger, and they have, like, they can be developed. And he's reclassed, like, six or seven dudes from that. Such a great program. Uh, and it goes back to, like, judging the book by its cover, but it's also that um, perception sometimes becomes reality. And um, so you've got to overcome that perception, you know, because people people start perceiving and they create that what they want to see about you and they they judge you or whatever the case may be. And yet then it also may be like a program like this where um, you're doing everything you can. You're rangering hard. You're just not cut out for the job that you came into. And you thought it was right. The Army thought it was right, at least in the initial phase, because they had you sign the dotted line. But that's all they did in an assessment, right? Check. Yep. And you passed basic training or you passed AIT or OSIT, whatever you went through. And that's, yeah, yeah, you qualified with the basic minimum. Then you go to an elite organization and you have to hold that standard to its highest level. That's a very different story, and so there's nothing wrong um, with re, you know, self-assessing or somebody coming to you and saying, "Hey, you're just not a linebacker in Division One football." Right. You know, we're gonna we're gonna reassess this whole situation, and um, that that doesn't happen in the the normal, you know, conventional army or conventional military that much. And so, kudos to a regiment that they're they have that kind of program. But you're getting outstanding soldiers who meet the criteria from, you know, the physical standpoint, understand what it means to, you know, wear that beret every day and that, you know, got to earn it every day. And then you're getting a great guy that you can then now mold into something very different. Yeah. And part of it, honestly, is is the and it's a philosophy, I guess, if you will. And, and especially as I get towards the, the end of of my portion in being where I'm at and what I'm doing, moving into the more administration portion, administrative, excuse me, portion of the career, you know, you, the idea is, I guess, the, and I, I don't know who had the quote, but, you know, we will never sit under the shade of the trees that we plant here. We, we won't do it. So what are we doing now to figure out how this is going to run after we're gone and do this? And these are the guys that are going to do it. So it's just like your kids or anything. Else. This is an investment. And mm-hmm. you try to make it the best while still maintaining that, that standard has to be done. So, yeah. yeah. So Major Johnson had a, you know, I'm sure you've heard some of his stuff, but when he says, you know, what are you doing right now? To make for uh, regiment 
2055. Hmm. So I, I like that, you know, and, and the things you're doing, you know, and the, the, the mentorship you provide to those guys down there and bringing those young rangers in and, you know, giving them a second chance. That you're doing exactly what, you know, the our major's talking about. My, my squad leaders are doing it. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling the strings and putting the chess pieces on, but it's the guys, it's, it's those, those the sixes that are, that are making these guys better guys. Like, I see it every day. Hey, your present leader, though, <clears throat> you know, like, Hurt or not, like I've now been out with my foot broken and out there running, doing kit runs, and I'm like, this is gonna suck. And me and him are like, bro, I'm, I'm broke. And he's like, me too, George. <laughs> <laughs> we're just like, hey man, we're just gonna, I'll carry you, you carry me. But Survive. Could, yeah.